Enigma's Cold War server is chaotic at times, it's brutal at times, and in a helicopter it can be pretty unforgiving, especially for the new and uninitiated. Today we're setting off on a new small series that'll cover some flight planning essentials for the HIP, and ultimately we'll take everything we learned from the episodes and put it all together for a full up sortie. Field planning in the HIP. Does it even matter with how chaotic things are online? How much fuel does the hip burn in an hour? If you were going on a spec ops raid 125 kilometers away, how much fuel should you take with you? How would you know? How would you calculate that? And how long can you fly with the default fuel load when you spawn in? Today we're going to examine these questions and show you the things that I consider for fuel planning and using the hip online, specifically for Enigma's Cold War server. The hip on average consumes about 800 liters of fuel per hour. In some real-world operator manuals, fuel consumption is listed between 800 and 850 liters per hour, and they use that as a figure across all conditions. This tells me that this is a generalization with some slop built into it. Pilots and DCS have found that to generally be the case, but there are circumstances where the consumption has been reportedly closer to 900 liters per hour. For my planning, I'll always go with the worst-case estimate and just have the extra fuel for the sortie. So that said, I figure 900 liters per hour as our fuel burn rate when I do my calculations. Now that we've settled on that figure, how much fuel does the DCS HIP carry? Well, the HIP has a few tank configurations thanks to the use of some optional auxiliary tanks, but the one that we have in DCS doesn't have the ability to carry that, so we're left at 2,400 liters on board at 100% fuel. That 2,400 liters is a tremendous amount of fuel. If we're using our fuel burn rate of 900 liters per hour, that means you're flying for 2 hours and 40 minutes. And once again, that's a really conservative estimate. So in the context of combat on Enigma's Cold War server, we're almost never going to be flying for over 2 hours straight on a single sortie. It is certainly possible though with the longer range raids to enemy factories or depots or the oil rigs far offshore, but the typical troop drops, you're not going to see anything that long in duration. If you're planning on carrying out a longer range raid, there are some things you're going to want to do. Uh, we'll need to figure out a few numbers to be successful here. We'll need the distance that we'll be flying. We'll need the speed that we'll be flying that distance. And from there, we're going to figure out our estimated flying time. Once we have our estimated flying time, we're going to use that with our fuel burn rate to figure out how much fuel we'll need to cover that flight time. For figuring out distance, you'll want to use a ruler on the F-10 map in-game. If you're feeling pretty hardcore, you can go on skyvector.com and you can plug in some manual waypoints to get a total distance. And on skyvector, it'll automatically tally the distance for you and you can plug in the speed you'll be flying. So it sorts out the whole length of the trip and specific legs, how long they'll all take. So for me, I personally like to keep things within DCS as much as possible for the ease of use. So I simply use the F10 map. When you're using the F10 ruler method, figure out the routing that you'll take and then the distance of that routing. Then you'll need to use the speed that you plan on flying to come up with the estimated flight time. For planning's sake, max speed for a hip that is pylonless but has max fuel is 250 kilometers per hour. If you're taking pylons and max fuel, use 230 kilometers per hour. So for an easy example, let's say the target you want to raid is 125 kilometers away. Your cruise speed there is 250 kilometers per hour. So we can estimate it's going to take 30 minutes to get there. Because we'll want to make it back home, we want to add another 30 minutes. So the transit time is going to be about an hour total. Now we need to figure how much time on target we'll have. Let's say we'll be doing an 8 minute long spec op drop, but we're going to be orbiting the whole time. Let's round up 8 minutes to 10 minutes for the spec op drop, and let's give ourselves an additional 20 minutes of slot because we don't fully know what to expect and if we'll be delayed on the way there or if there's some other hazards we'll have to avoid. We also need time to locate and pick up the spec op guys after they're done with their assault. So in total, we'll need fuel for 1 hour and 30 minutes to do this spec op raid on a target that's 125 kilometers from us. If we're using a fuel burn rate of 900 liters per hour, that means we'll need 1,350 liters of fuel total. This works out to be about 56% of the max fuel. 
So you can see we can go pretty far, pretty fast on less than 60% fuel. Coincidentally, 60% fuel is the standard fuel loadout for a hip when you spawn in. 60% fuel with a 900 liter per hour burn rate is about an hour and 36 minutes worth of flight time. If you're doing regular troop drops, 40% is enough to fly over an hour and 50% is usually what I take just so I've got some extra on board in case the frontline shifts during a tick. That allows me extra flying time if I'm up in the air longer than anticipated. If all you want to do is fly from a frontline FARP and attack the closest enemy ground concentrations, the extent of your fuel planning should just be to defuel to 40 or 50% and that's it. A final thing to consider is the time remaining on the server. Nigma's Cold War server resets every 4 hours, so if there's 1 hour left, that may be enough to squeeze in a few drops and go home, but there would be no sense in bringing an hour 30 minutes of fuel or 2 hours worth of fuel because it's simply dead weight that's never going to be used. By taking the excess fuel in the face of an impending server reset, it's only going to be detracting from your performance you'd otherwise be getting without the quite literally useless weight. If you forgot, it's not a big deal, but for those wishing to squeeze every little bit of performance from their hip, definitely consider that. To summarize planning the fuel requirements, number one, we need to figure out the distance that we'll be flying. Number two, depending on our weight, we'll use the cruise speed and figure out how long we'll likely be flying by taking the distance and then dividing by the speed. This will give us a value in hours of flight time. Step three is to use either 800 or 900 liters per hour depending on how conservative we want to be with the fuel consumption and times that by the amount of time that we'll be flying. This will give us a ballpark estimate of how much fuel in liters we should be bringing with us. Step four is to take the liters of fuel we've calculated to carry and simply divide that by 2,400 liters, the max fuel amount, to get a value that will tell us what percentage we'll want the refueling team to load. Now that we have a basic understanding of fuel loading in the hip, in the next video we'll take a look at the armament and troop loading considerations. We'll take a look at how much troops weigh along with how much various armament combinations weigh and their overall speed implications. Before we go, I always like to end with a question. When you're flying helicopters online, do you defuel or do you stick with the standard fuel load? Let me know below and until next time, bye!